the goals I always had was to make a viewer fall in love with systems. For the last several years, I've been working on what I call simulations. They're essentially video games that play themselves. They took the form of these large-scale ecosystems with different characters, animals, plants that would produce new and interesting behaviors over time. The sense of emergent behavior was very beautiful and very surprising for me as an artist, but I found that it was very difficult to understand what any of it meant. I turned to the idea of storytelling and specifically narrative as a kind of Trojan horse device for the viewer to understand the emotional arc of a set of characters and then get into the larger simulation in the world that I wanted to create. Early on in the writing process of Life After Bob, I knew that I wanted to make this Bob character assist a young girl as a life coach. I was feeling very anxious at the time when I was expecting my first daughter, Eden, and I didn't know if I could balance being a father and work. So I thought the worst father I could be was the father who conflates his work with his daughter. And that is the character of Dr. Wong. He's the father of Chalice. He invented Bob, and he put Bob into her brain when she was born to be a co-parent. I am a Bob. Let me cook a perfect egg. OK, let's slow down. I realized I had to make a story that reflected these larger ideas about what life after AI could be, but I also had to reflect something specific about what I was personally going through. What does Bob do for you? Help me arrive at my destiny, but later, not now. If you already know what I should do, then why ask me? I'm simply presenting the highest probability of path alignment. The exhibition for Life After Bob is composed of two large-scale LED screens. On one screen, there will be the 48-minute Life After Bob episode, The Chalice Study. And on the other screen, there will be the same 48-minute episode, but in this one, you can pause and dive into any given scene at your own tempo using your phone as a remote control. You can click on anything arbitrarily in the frame, a main character, a key artifact or prop, and the camera will zoom into that. This also brings up information from the Life After Bob wikis. Edits that you make will influence some of the cosmetic and later behavioral changes of those objects that will then play live. There's a kind of a feedback loop in which Life After Bob is a kind of programmable movie. It's constantly talking to Life After Bob Wiki and to this world watching mode. For example, these are markers for a procedural crowd. That crowd persists on the wiki, so every time these new characters are generated, they get their own wiki entry. People can extend that, they can make it their own. This is a blend of both very scripted elements, but all these characters in the background, and their behavior is entirely simulated. We started Life After Bob pre-production with a 76-page script. Producer Veronica So took me aside and said, look, we want to make something good, not something impossible. And so I started to write that version of Life After Bob, episode one. And then the pandemic hit and our production paused for a moment, but everyone we were working with, thankfully, was already all over the place. We were working on Zoom already as devastating as the pandemic is and continues to be, it gave us an opportunity to really hibernate inside a project and to give everyone on the team something to focus on in such an unstable time and give us a little bit more runway to try to make the thing we really want to make. Life After Bob takes place in a weird, volatile, and changing world, a very transitional world, similar to the world that we live in. And there's an idea that there's somewhere on the other side some sense of normality or instability, but I believe we live in a world right now where stability will never come back in the way that we all hoped for. I think we're gonna have to learn to live in choppy waters and learn to surf them. And I wanted to make a coming-of-age story that helped Chalice navigate that. I hope people will come away with some sense of enchantment and hopefully come away with some energy that they can take within their own lives. My dream with any of the works I make is that you hold on to this fairy tale as a new kind of archetype that you can 
think about and imagine as a way to kind of surf the chaos that we live in.